Okay, welcome back again. This will be the second part of the first video to complete that uh, session we started. When it, we, we, we are talking about file systems. Uh, we're talking about system files and file systems. So I'm still on system files. We've looked at, uh, let me share. We've looked at, um, share my screen. Okay, we've looked at the essential startup files, uh, essential system files, which we have looked at, and then startup files, which we have seen here. And then we are now in the Windows folders that are very important. Uh, Windows folders, uh, I'm talking about Windows or Windows NT that contains the control.ini, vector.ini, notepad uh, there and system that any i we have the add-ins active x control dot ocs files we have the add pa uh, application patch application formatting files we have config this one is uh the music music inter instrument digital interface um instrument division files for connecting the MIDI, uh, MIDI uh, ports are on normally on our sound card, the, the early sound cards, and then on some laptops. You can connect your, your keyboard, uh, musical keyboard, and musical uh, instrument to the computer and record uh, like that. Then we have connection wizard for internet connection files. Uh, that your computer uses when Windows starts for the first time. Uh, we have a CSC that the client side caching, the, the offline files that are used during client, client side caching. We have Coso. These are folders, okay? Uh, we have the Coso and Icon files are stored. We have the debug folder where the, the log files are stored. Log files are files that are recorded when there are problems or when programs uh installing or uh, so that you can use them to debug your to debug uh, you know program and problems to solve problems to trace how the uh you know particular problem originated and uh, the processes just gone through before the prep before the problem you know um came up downloaded program files uh, this is another program from driver cache. These are uninstalled driver files. We have the eOMS. This is used by Mindo Media Center Edition. Uh, probably may not be available in other uh, window, but they're not using that. Fonts, that's constant. All font files, all Windows installation use fonts. The help files are there. The IM, IMI, um, IME for language files. And then we have the inf INF for driver device driver information files. Now this is very important because as I uh, earlier mentioned, uh, no, the driver files are kept here. So if you want to um, probably um, solve some driver problems that your present info, your present solution does not uh, recognize uh probably does not recognize a device uh because the driver was not uh, installed and you cannot find a way of doing that you probably normally go to the internet to get but if you don't have that uh, if you have been backing up this uh, iif folder it, it contains your driver information all the devices on that machine the driver information files will be kept here which can be used to uh restore them to basic operation probably now installer cache window installer files that that is dot msi microsoft installer files are here then java files in the java folder you have java files then we have media folder containing sounds and music files example uh, dot wave dot let me continue from where i stopped this is becoming another thing This is becoming another thing. Mm. 
Yes. I'm here. Java, Media, MS, MS Agent, MS uh, Apps, all these ones are very important. Uh, let me move on to the PC Health for all this uh, registration. Uh, Complus files are there. Um, we have the Prefetch, we have uh, um, PRNet, we have Repair, where you can use for any repair. Uh, when you have uh, when you have problems, Rexy backup files can be used to to do some repair. Resources user interface files, schema cache folder security. This is where you have the folder for security. Setup updates is dynamic update storage location. Software distribution automatic used by automatic updates. Such assistant files in that uh, such assist system very important this is backward compatibility file to the system folder on the we have a system 32 this is core system files we'll see that in system 32 folder um then task system schedule tax files temporary very important this is this this folder is very important is the temporary files folder where you know temporary files are stored and this is actually where your virtual memory, you know, uses to augment the physical RAM. And this can be easily uh, removed uh, after each, uh, you know, after um, each session of your window purchase when you finish using. So that means it, it's advisable you, you remove them regularly because they expand as 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 uh, as used, and also this is uh, what uh, this cleanup utility will be looking for also. Okay, um, we have two n underscore thirty two image. Uh, that's it for folder. Imaging files for scanners are kept here. Web printer and wall paper files are there, and then we have uh, when x times x side by side. Okay, shared component. Now let's look at system 32 folder because of my time. So 32 folder and the subfolder contain the core operating system files for your window. Okay. 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 Um, okay. What's up? Uh, we have all these. Essential system files are here. We have um, H uh, HAL, hardware absorption layer, the DLL, NTOS, NTOS, kernel, SF, SF files are stored in 72 folder. And these are where you have config, DHCP, DirectX, okay, window file protection, uh, drivers, install drivers are here. Um, this in conjunction with the uh, IN, INF in the DAPS folder. IES, Internet Authentication Service Files, IME language files are also here, see? So restore data files or system restore data files are kept in the restore folder. In the system 32 folder, okay? So technical setup and all these things. So um, it's, it's quite uh, important that we take note of this. Okay. Um, let me okay. Let me continue with this. Um, okay. Um, so these are the system 
files and their locations you should be conversant with very very important uh, don't play with them because you will need them so we will we will need to do some practicals to see where they are physically located on the system okay uh let me see if i can do that very briefly but there is something you need to understand that there are times you will need to know how to extract files from your operating system cd or dvd okay uh, so it's important you have to install a correct version of system of startup files or uh, so if you install incorrect version to incorrect location your system might not operate as expected or might not start because versions system uh, files for different versions may not work okay so incorrect versions of system or startup files may cause your problem not to operate properly or you may not start at all so that's why it's good to get the correct version you use on your system when you are installing it for instance if you use windows xp professional i thought try to use that to do the repair on window 7 professional windows 7 enterprise windows 7 ultimate and then windows 10 or the rest is the same make sure you use the same so and it is normally stored in the slash i386 folder of your windows operating system cd so so you can do copy you can expand where they are compressed uh from the dot cap file such as uh, driver.cap so you can use it to extract and then uh, you can when extracting a file from the cap, you have to use the expand command so um these are when you see ntos um kernel dot ex then underscore that means it's compressed so the uncompressed version will be ntos kernel dot ese so anyone that you see um underscore ending it that means it's uh it's compressed okay now you can also use the copy command in recovery console but we're going to show you how to do how to go to recovery console when we need to troubleshoot our windows operating system problems now you can use the copy source destination so this is the way this is the, the this is the this is the syntax for that copy source destination. so let's look at this uh, table uh, the source specify the folder to be uh, the specify the file to be copied destination is best with the driver or the file name for the new file so this is our example you can also use the um the expand command also we have that then we also have uh, um we have um, um source then the the white card or the switch slash f five spec then destination slash year slash uh, day or this thing so this, this can be used so you can see um uh, I mean slash uh, yes and suppress the override prompt when you expand so that means you just accept then that is slash y not here sorry and then slash uh, um slash d list the file contain contained in the cabinet file without expanding it so and so and then the f is uh, talking about uh if the source contains more than one file it's good can identify the specific specifies of file that you want to expand from that particular uh source that is can include white cards okay now these are ways we use that now the channel the destination can be any folder within the system 32 folder of the current windows installation the root of any drive the location installation sources or the cd uh, command com folder the decision cannot be removable media okay cannot be because destination cannot be removed in media because they are not normally writable the session file cannot be read only okay we can use the attribute attribute command to remove the read only attribute and then we can we can use that to quickly uh know the attribute uh, system read only at uh,
Okay. I continue where I stopped. Okay, this is where I stopped. This destination file assist. If the decision file exists, the expand command prompts you for confirmation to override the files unless you include the uh, slash y parameter. Okay, so I will now move to, uh, quickly to uh, file systems. Okay, but before then, let me quickly. Let me quickly move to the i want to share i want to share something on to show you where this thing are really located on the local drive okay now i'm on the local drive now so i'm going to share the local drive i'm going to share yes Okay, let me share the local drive. Yes, as you can see now, the local drive is, um, you can see the folder here, program files, program files, users, windows. In the window directory, you can see all that we're talking about. You can be sure that we'll be talking about. You see all this. Um, this is the uh, app patch, add-ins, all these things we talk about. If you can see them, you can see that they are there. Uh, you see the the INF I talk about is here. Can you see? Um, if you open it, you will see a lot of uh, files there, and then you can. You know, uh, well, let's look for the system 32. System 32. Okay, security is here. Uh, look at system 32. This is system for 16 bits. This is 32 bits. These are the where you get all these things. Okay. Okay, sorry for the breaking transmission. I have to attend to my daughter on the phone. Uh, quickly, as you can see, this is um, System32 folder. See all the files are here. Very important. Uh, don't delete any file anyhow. Make sure that these are where you see a lot of uh, DLL, the DLL files. Most of the system uh, most of the file um, system files are here. System files, they are here. System files are here. You see, a lot of them are here. Uh, as we said, you, you can see, you will see the um, NT kernel will be here. If you search for it, NT, uh, NT OS, NT OS, you can see NBT start is there. Uh, NT OS, just be looking for the N, you will find it very soon. Yes, this has the net logon. Um, okay, you can see um, Notepad is there. You can see all this. Uh, okay, NS lookup. These are commands we use for network. So they are here. NT print. So. Um, I'm expecting to see NT. Oh, they have changed it. Okay, this is, uh, don't forget, this is Windows. Yes, it's here too. NTOS Canon, yeah. This is Windows um, 
Windows 10, don't forget, this uh, the laptop I'm using now, the the OS on the physical hard drive is window is Windows 10, uh, where we put uh, where we put the virtual machine, we put the Windows XP and the Windows uh, 7. So I'm going to be looking at those ones later, but I'm just showing you physical hard uh, physical files. I mean the the, uh, the the system files on the physical uh, hard drive of this laptop. Okay. Now I think uh, you can see this is the NTOS kernel. You can see it's just about uh, 10.5 megabytes, and that is what is doing more of the things. NT print is a you see you see the .dll, you see the uh, all these things are here, and uh, you you know we have the ODBC. We have uh, a lot of them. So these are good. I mean these are important system files. Moment of system 32 folder is affected or deleted, forget you can't start your operating system. And whilst we have just shown you that there could be a way of uh, if one or two files are missing, instead of reinstalling the whole Windows, you can use copy from the original CD on the, the installer CD, or you can use expand to replace them. Instead of reinstalling the uh, whole um windows we can replace the, just the, the 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 corrupted files or the the missing file okay now i'm going to move quickly to the um i'm going to uh, stop sharing now i'm going to i want to move to the next uh, um now i'm going to move to the now this I'm, yeah, I'm going to move to understanding file system. Okay, this second part of the first video we started with uh, uh, understanding system files. So we're going to be looking at file systems. So understanding system files. System files are important files that required by the operating system to function. Now we're now looking at file system. Now we need to understand the filing system, the the, the way uh, operating system, generally Windows, organizes files. So file system has to do with the way in which files are named, and where they are placed logically for storage and retrieval. So in a computer, a file system, sometimes reaching together as file system without any space, is the way in which files are named, and where they are placed logically for storage and retriever. So in the DOS, in the Windows and the OS2, Macintosh and Unis based operating system all have the file systems in which files are placed somewhere in a hierarchical tree structure. So a file is placed in a directory or a folder in Windows or a subdirectory we we'll call a subfolder in, um, in, in Windows at a desired place in the tree structure. And for this to be possible, there must be an organization. So that is what we are looking at. So what we have to understand about file system is that it deals with how you store files on the physical drive or even on the, um, even the logical drive too. Um, you know, you know, partitioning can create logical drives. And then um, we can use um, what do you call it? Um, we can use our um, flash. You know, uh, these are also um, you know storage uh, devices. So computers use particular kind of file system to store and organize data or media, such as hard drive, the CD, DVD, in an uh, optical drive or on a flash drive. Okay. Uh, we also have um, even the uh, electric, uh, electronic, uh, you know, um, drives now, okay, um, that are very portable and they can take a lot of, uh, uh, they can handle a lot of file space, uh, file storage space. Now, any place that a PC stores data is employing the use of some types of some type of file system, okay, any place that a PC stores data 
I mean, it's a personal computer, laptop, uh, even your phone, even your smartphone. It employs the use of some type of file system. Just look at this as a filing system, cabinets where files are arranged. So there must be a way to remember where those files are kept, those files are stored. So the same thing, you know, the computer uses file systems to remember where uh, files are stored and where, how they are organized on the media or on the medium of storage. Okay, a file system can be thought of as, an, as can be thought of as an index or database containing the physical location of every piece of data on a hard drive. A file system is set up on a drive during a format. Okay, so it's the format command that puts the file system there. Now the partition is is, is going to do the as I said earlier. Uh, it's going to just create the boundary, create the the the, the boundary, um, the 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 the, um, the the extent to which the files, I mean, to which the drive can can be can be can be can be can be used. Okay, that's where the size is 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 is, is defined. During the partition, where you whether you want to use twenty gig or use hundred gig for a partition, or you know um, five hundred gig or more, if you have something like a one uh, terabyte, okay, you may want to partition. Into. Now, when that is done, then the formatting is not going to put the file system. Now, Microsoft Windows operating system have have always supported and still do support various fashion of the file allocation table. Which we call the FAT file system. Now, now Windows is also supporting Windows NT um, newer file system, which we call new technology file system. Okay, new technology file system. Now, some other open system also take advantage of FAT and interface, but many different kinds of system file assist. So we have a lot of them. You can do more search but let's look at the, the majority i mean the major ones that uh, windows are set now we're going to look at the other one um the one that uh, linux supports the ext file system and that now file allocation file file allocation table is a type of file system you know it was created by microsoft in 1977 it's still in use today but it's not having all the needed um functions that we need today security is very poor they can take very smaller size. And uh, now we have FAT12, fast, fast 12, fast 12, fast, um, you know, we support up to 32 megabytes. Then can you see? We have FAT16, which take up to two gig. Um, we have FAT32, which now supports up to eight terabyte, okay? But that can uh, be in, in uh, theory, but practically there may be some limitation. Now let's look at the new technology file system. Now. It's a fashion that was introduced by Microsoft in 1993 with the uh, advent of Windows NT 3.1, okay? NTV support add up, up to 256 terabytes, okay? That's, that's, that's humongous, that's, that's great. That's, that's a real size, now that's really big, okay? Uh, but as I said, it may uh, be theoretical limit, theoretical limit, the physical, um, you know, Practical limit may not be up to that, uh, but two five six. You know, even if it is uh, half of this, it is something. NTFS is the primary file system used in Windows, Microsoft Windows Seven. Okay, so that's it. And since then, uh, NTFS. I mean, Windows Seven will not support. Uh, you know, will not uh, allow you to install it on uh, probably uh, FAT. Okay, and so. And uh, Windows Vista, Windows XP, 2000NT. So the Windows Server line of Windows also use, primarily used with NTFS. Windows Server line of operating system, Windows Server um, 10, Windows Server, you know, all of them 12 and uh, uh, 2020, 2019, 2018, all those things. Uh, the file location table file system was primary file system in Microsoft's older 
older operating systems, but is still supported today along with NTFS. So it's for the older system because of the limitation. Now let's look at NTFS and NTFS 5. What's the difference? Now NTFS is a later version on Windows NT, NT NTFS 5 is Windows 2000 version of NTFS. We have NTFS 5.1 in Windows XP. I mean, it's Windows XP version of NTFS. As for advanced technology, the latest version are usually better than the previous one. Okay, now that's why we have versions because when something is released um, as uh, technology advances, as researches, you know, go uh, continue, uh, there are better, you know, enhancement, better features, better security, and better, you know, additions. So these are what leads to new versions. So in addition to all the NTFS features, NTFS 5, which is the version 5.1, has support for encryption. Don't forget encryption, where there are, that provides more security. In the disk quotas, okay? Disk quotas, then sparse files, then repass points, and volume point mount points. Very, very important. These are features that are supported by NTFS 5. And this as a uh, I mean, this, you know, provides us with uh, better uh, functionalities. Now, HP file system is uh, FS is called uh, high performance file system. HPFS is high performance file system. Now, HPFS or file high performance file system is a file system created particularly for the operating system slash two to improve upon the vision of the fax file system. It's written by Gordon Lentwin uh, and others at Microsoft. And it was added to the operating system 2 version 1.2. At that time, still a joint undertaking of Microsoft and IBM and released in 1988. But among its improvements are support for missed case files, file names in different code pages, support for long file names, 255 characters as opposed to FAT, which takes about 8.3 characters. Um, I mean, we take, uh, we, we, I mean, uh, as opposed to, uh, to FAT characters which is lesser. Sorry, that is a reference uh, link. More efficient use of disk space also recorded. You know, files are no longer, are not stored using multiple sector cluster, but on per sector basis. Support an internal architecture that keeps related items close to each other in disk volume. It has less fragmentation of data uh, because, uh, you know, fragmentation, we'll talk about that is when these files are scattered and uh, it takes longer time to access those files. But when we have defragmentation, the files are brought closer into contiguous, you know, links so that uh, contiguous form, so that the files that are needed together are actually close together. And that's enhancing the speed of running applications. So we're going to look at that, why we need to do maintenance of our hard drive you know, defragmenting and fragmenting. Um, I mean, defragmenting when we have uh, fragmentation. Then we have extent-based space allocation. These are all on the uh, high performance file system. Then we have uh, separate date, date stamps for last modification, last access and creation, as opposed to fat last modification only date stamp. Okay, we have a uh, B plus tree structure for directories, root directories located at the midpoint rather than the beginning of the disk for faster average access. Can you see that? In high performance file system, the root directory located is, I mean, the root directory is located at the midpoint, not at the beginning of the disk, because it can for faster average access. That's really an enhancement, okay? Now, half, high, high, high performance file system also can keep 64 uh, kilobytes of metadata. And IBM offers two kind of uh, uh, IFS driver for this file system. The standard one and then the HPFS uh, 386. Now, let's not talk more about this. You can read up this. We have also a resilient file system. Okay, resilient file system, uh, REFS. Microsoft developed this and it's, uh, it's available for Windows 8 servers. Windows 10 and um, um, above may also be using it. File system architecture absolutely differs from other. Window file system and it's been organized in form of B plus three. Our uh, resilient file system has high tolerance to failures achieved due to new features included into the system. Okay, no wonder it is called resilient file system. And name and namely copy on write, 
copy on write. No metadata is modified without being copied. No data is written over the existing one and rather into a new disk space. So with any file modification, a new copy, uh, a new copy of metadata is created into any free storage space. And then the system creates a link from all that metadata. We also have, um, um, as a result of system stored schemas, as a result of this, as a result, a system stored schema quantity of older backups in different places, which provides for easy file recovery unless this storage place is overwritten. That's why it's called resilient for, uh, you know, for what we can call um, redundancy, you know, uh, you know, support. Now, universal disk formats is uh, for, you know, compact disk, DVD, Blu-ray, and all this. Uh, it's, it supports ISO 9660 and for uh, both, you know, recordable and writable optical drives. So UDF is developed and maintained by the Optical Switch Technology Association, OSTA. And then uh, multi-session mastering is also provided in the UA, in, in a universal DIX format. So it's, uh, it's, 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 it's common to all the major, I mean, DVDs and uh, CDs. So um, then we have other file systems for the Mac OS file system, where the HFS um, in the Apple desktop products, well, we have the, we also have um, Linux file system. We have XT2, XT3, XT4. These are native Linux file systems. When you begin to deal with uh, Linux, you will see this. Uh, open source Linux OS always aim to implement tests and use different concepts of file system. And they don't want to be, to be bothered by, uh, you know, this proprietary stuff. So among huge amount of various file system types, the most popular Linux file system are the ones I've just mentioned, ES2, ES3, ES4. And then we have Razer file system, alternative file Linux file system designed to store huge amount of small file. When we have the XFX, okay? XFS uh, is now, XFS are implemented in Linux, okay? And then, um, you know, the, the file system has great performance and is widely used to store files. We have the JFX developed by IBM for their powerful co computing systems. JFS, uh, uh, usually stand for GFS uh, one. We have GFS one, which is GFS, then GFS two is second edition. So if you don't see anything attached to it, that is GFS one. Currently, this file system is open source and is implemented in most modern Linux distribution. Okay. Then we have the concept of hard links. You know, using this kind of OS makes most Linux system, Linux file system similar in that. The file name is not regarded as file attribute, not defined as an alias for a file in certain direction. So hard links, we talk about hard links in op a file, Linux operating system, or you know, Unix like operating system. File, ob file objects um, can be linked from many locations, even many times from the same directory using different names. That's what we call the hard links. Now we have um, BSD, Berkeley. Um, you know, uh, system development or whatever about uh, BSD, Solaris, Unis file system. They they have, you know, they use uh, Unis file system, often referred to as fast file system (FFS). Fast compared to a previous file system used for Unis. Okay, UFX is a source of ideas for many other file system functions. Currently, UFS. In different edition is supported by all units family OS and is major file system of BSD operating system and Sun Solaris operating system and uh, and uh, you know uh, we have uh, ZFX, JFX, uh, are derived and uh, they are derived file system for Unix, uh, etc. Then we have uh, cluster file systems, you know zettabyte file system that is ZFS by by Sun company. Apple S Sun. Then we have the virtual machine file system developed by the VMware company for its VMware EX uh, X server. Then we have GFX, not JFX, GFX, Red Hat 
Linux uh, global file system. Then we have GFS1 original. So these are cluster file system that, so common property of this file system is distributed storage support, extensibility and modularity. So this uh, cluster file system, the support, you know, distributed storage support, I means the storage is extensibility and modularity. So that's all about uh, five systems. So I've looked at cluster five system. We have looked at uh, the Linux file systems. Uh, we have looked at uh, Mac operating system file systems as other file systems. Then under the Windows, where Windows compatible, we have the universal disk format for you know most um, uh, compact disks, CDs, DVDs, and uh, Blu-ray disks. Uh, we have all looked at the uh, resilient file system, and uh, we have also looked at um, the other ones, um, high performance file system, then NTFS file system, and NTFS file. Look at the difference and look at the features. So then we look at the fact allocation system. So this is uh, we're ending the understanding file system here. This is the second video in continuation with. Uh, in continuation of uh, understanding system files. Now, I believe you should be able to differentiate between system file and file system when you have uh, a question like that. So thank you for this session. I'll, I'll say goodbye now, and uh, we'll, I'll see you in the lab class. Thank you, bye.